Hi, it's Mike with Uctastic, and I'm here at GoToConf 2015 again. I'm sitting here with Justin Meyer, who gave a talk on how to build single-page applications the right way, or did I say those in the right order? Close, close enough. Okay. Yeah, you did a good so, job. So those words were in the title of his talk. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. So about building single-page applications the right way, you know, what was that talk about that wasn't in the title? <laughs> yeah, so the longer title mm -hmm. would be that uh, I've done consulting for like eight years, mm -hmm. front-end JavaScript consulting, built a bunch of different projects for a lot of different companies, and I wanted to see if I could put in one 50-minute talk all the different different techniques and strategies we use mm -hmm. to make like applications, I would say, competitive in a... Um, kind of the world we are now, where if you want it to be as fast as possible, maintainable as possible, what are all the best things that you should probably be doing, and how do we do them, as okay. an example? Okay, so uh, with your talk, uh, what were some of the, the high points, or what were some of the lessons maybe that you were trying yeah. to, to bring and, and, and surface? So the biggest one was... Uh, what my favorite was, was the model layer that we added. Um, we kind of discovered that when you make a request for page data or like, hey, I want a list of to-dos, you're always in the params that you pass to the server, those always represent a set. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to-dos for user ID 5. So you put an object with user ID 5 in it. That represents a set and then if you can compare that set to other sets that you're loading, you can do all these sophisticated performance optimizations for free. Right. So if you want to, if you have multiple, if you have pages that are making multiple requests at the same time, mm -hmm. you can union those sets to make a single request for oh, okay. all data. Um, you can do things like fall through caching. Mm -hmm. uh, and the biggest one of all of them, I thought, was how easy real-time behavior becomes. Mm -hmm. So normally when you request data from a page, from the server and you get a list of elements or a list, or a list of items to do's and you just stick that into the browser. Right? You'll use like live uh, live binding so if the list changes, well the page will update itself. Right. But you just get that list. But if you can associate the set of data that was used to retrieve that mm -hmm. list and keep a reference to that list and its set, mm -hmm. then when a new data item comes in, you can automatically decide does it belong in that set mm -hmm. or should it, is it in that set and needs to be removed. Right. So all the normal stuff you have to do with a real time of like updates come in and maintaining these lists and what's visually on the page, you can get that automatically if you have set awareness. Okay. So this were these lessons that were coming from uh, your production environments or Yeah, so from our from our clients. So you're drifting a little am bit. I'm drifting a little yeah. bit. Oh, let me stay in. Yeah, yeah, you're great. Um, so the one from the uh, the biggest example for the set stuff came from an application we wrote that was kind of like a file manager. Mm -hmm and had real-time connection. So if new files would come in, uh, we'd have to put them in the right place. Right. And also, um, it would load the folders and the folders and the files in two independent widgets. And we wanted to write them so they didn't have to know about each right. other, like the, the folders and the files and folders. So we wrote this layer to automatically detect that you were loading overlapping data, unify it, make a single request, and then kind of feed it back yeah. out. So it sounds like uh, you know a lot of people look at single page applications and think, oh, it's just easier to write JavaScript than it is to write server side code and deal with that. But it sounds like it's not really the case. It sounds like there's a lot of thought that has to be put into uh, the architecture supporting a, a single page application that isn't obvious. Yes, if you want to, I mean, it's if you're writing an application, it's all about how complex your application mm -hmm. you're writing. I do tend to think that writing JavaScript code mm -hmm. for the same set of features tends to be easier. Doing front like thin server architecture right. uh, is definitely easier than writing, you know, the, from the server's perspective because it's kind of somehow easier to like pull your data in, draw the page all in the client than to definitely do it on the server. But what my talk was about is you want those kind of features that people want and expect out of apps now. Right. Um, 
like real time is a good example, or if you want it to run really fast, you have to, yeah, there's a lot of sophisticated stuff you have to do, but I think we've found ways of making that a lot easier. Okay, okay. And, you know, the, the, the ecosystem around single page architectures is constantly in flux, and, like, well, and yeah. ironically, flux. flux yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is just MVVM. Yeah. But, branded with a new name. So when when people are looking at building a, a, a single page architecture now mm-hmm. and they're looking at a plethora of, of options, you know, Angular is is God's uh what, what the uh, uh some plastic name I can't think of Polymer. Polymer. Uh, well, yeah, Google Pol- has Polymer. Yeah, yeah, Google has Polymer and and React and Flux and mm-hmm. and, and you know Backbone seems to be kind of on life support. Yeah. And, I mean, there's so many choices. I mean, exactly. how do you talk about like how you can evaluate how your needs? Yeah, relate to uh, 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 capabilities or Ember. You know, that's another because yeah. there's so many. Um, like, do you talk about those kinds of decisions? Not in this talk, but okay. I'm happy to talk about it. Okay. Uh, so I'm extremely biased because yeah. I'm the maintainer of CanJS, which is a framework, and that's what okay. my presentation showed. Um, how, at least for what we care about, is uh, I built JavaScript MVC like seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And what we say is that if you would use that and kept with us, we will be able to upgrade you right. to the latest, greatest features. Because CanJS has everything that all the other frameworks have. Um, but you're absolutely right in that okay. it's a rapidly changing world. Right. Right. Uh, Backbone was huge. Angular was huge. Now it seems like React is going to eat yeah. a lot of Angular's lunch. Um, one of the first points I actually made in my talk was that how uh, technology choices matter far less mm-hmm. than uh, management and user experience choices. Okay. And this is actually backed up by data that we've uh, we've accumulated with our company. Okay. So the first thing I talked about is how we use checklists to um, make sure we're doing the right things on projects. So we go to a client, we like, hey, are you guys doing these things? Let's figure out a way to do that. But we've kept data over the things over time of the, what we have and haven't done, and we've all put, like wrote what correlates strongest to project success and things like you know how long can how long can you uh when how long will it be till your first release right do you do social events with your company mm-hmm. uh are you doing user experience testing okay it matters far far more than things like are you even writing tests okay so just kind of taking a spin on culture as being a um well, I think there was an, uh, a talk where they, or uh, some kind of common wisdom about that your architecture represents your your communication system. Yeah. And, and it sounds like you're kind of in that same spirit of like, if you're going to be building something, how are you guys communicating, and how how is the company going about building its its products? Yeah. Not just like, are you doing TDD, but. How do you talk? How do you communicate? That's, that's exactly like I, I think that. So everybody wants to do framework wars discussions, and and they're valid because there's interesting differences. Um, and I'm happy to go into that. Yeah. But my first point I always make is that if you're looking at a f- choice of framework is going to matter in terms of success or not with your mm-hmm. application, it's probably not. And if you really do care about success, you do care about those things: of communication, are we building the right app for the right people, mm-hmm. that kind of things. Um, and I also think that in choice of framework, you know, pick which one you guys can get behind the mm-hmm. most. Because I've been in situations where some people want this from framework and other people want this framework. Right. You need everybody on the same page. Just get them on the same page. It doesn't matter even if you're going to be like, we want to use Backbone, right. even though like it, in terms of features, it's kind of been left behind. If everybody's together mm-hmm. and you're all going to invest in it and everybody's going to get a good be experts in Backbone, you'll produce something way better than the newest bleeding edge mm-hmm. framework with all the bells and whistles. Yeah, and it's even the same with like it sounds like what you're describing is PHP versus Ruby versus Python. If you're a professional, you know what you want to build. You're going to exactly. build something, you know, whether it's in VB or it's in Closure. Um, you know, two ends of the popularity spectrum. Of yeah. Who thinks who's smartest? <laughs> Uh, which, which we know, it's 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 the person who yeah. makes the most money. Uh, the, uh, so, but but the point is, is that if you're happy with what you're going to be building, and at least you can get everybody working together mm-hmm. and, and wrapping their heads around the complexity of the problem, it doesn't matter whether you use flathead screwdrivers or Phillips. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna build something. So. 
Okay. Well, thank you very much awesome. for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.